and reach into space we will in uh, less than 30 minutes now. The clock is still running, showing 17 minutes and 43 seconds, but there will be another built-in hold at about uh, 11 minutes or so before the, uh, or at 9.41, actually. Uh, so uh, we still have some time to wait, but the all the indications are is that everything is going just fine, and the weather is perfect, and all of the uh, last-minute checks are uh, proceeding uh, appropriately, so uh, we're aiming for this 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time launch. Joe Engel, of course, the commander of uh, the shuttle, Columbia, is out there on that pad way up at the top. We uh, asked him some time ago just what he would be doing at about this time in the countdown, and here's what he had to say. Uh, things are happening so fast. The things that we need to check and monitor are, are, are coming so regularly, and uh, uh, we're... Um, our concentration is just entirely and totally on monitoring the systems, uh, making sure and trying to identify any anomaly that may be starting to generate early that uh, there really isn't, isn't the time to, to think about, am I going to get scared? And I think there's a real big desire not to make any mistakes then, and, and that takes your full attention, checking and rechecking all of the functions that we'll be doing in the cockpit. And we have heard a uh, few exchanges between the spacecraft and launch control, and they have been, just as uh, Joe Angle indicated, Gene, they're very crisp and businesslike. Uh, they've obviously got things to do, and they're just going to go ahead and do it. And beneath all that, I think Joe, in his own way, is, uh, is saying, gee, I, I, I just don't want to mess up. Everyone else is doing their job, and, and you know, in a minute, I'm going to have to do mine. And you have to take everything that is happening right at that moment. Here's the plane uh, piloted by uh, John Young, the commander of the first uh, shuttle. <laughs> It looks to me like he made an approach to the runway yeah. that the crew would have to land on. And, uh, of course, we can see the weather is absolutely gorgeous today. And uh, John can't have anything but good words to say about a go for launch. Sure. He's merely testing out whether they will be able to actually to return. And, of course, there are no uh, weather constraints on that. Well, let's go now uh, back to the Johnson Space Center in Houston and Steve Bell. Steve? Frank, uh, astronaut Joe Allen has been sitting here with me, listening in on all the conversations between Mission Control and the... Uh, astronauts now on the launch pad and Joe I understand we have now passed the first trouble point when we had to uh, uh, delay the mission last week uh, not last week Steve the the, the very first mission oh the first the, the first sh shuttle correct where where we couldn't get the backup computer to pay attention to the prime computers and, we and that happened that, right yeah. uh, about this time and uh, I'm listening to uh, Dick report that uh, the backup is listening now to the prime computers Here's, and everything's fine. Let's listen to launch control. Launch safety area is clear. The booster test conductor has ordered the gaseous nitrogen purge of the solid rocket booster aft skirts to begin. And the chase aircraft, presently at Patrick Air Force Base, have been ordered to start their engines. A check of all test support team members have verified that they are go for launch. So there's the latest uh, message from Mission Control, and as Joe says, we are past that point now where on the first space shuttle flight, we suddenly started to learn about computers that could have an independent mind if you didn't get to them soon enough and reprogram them. Uh, we'll be back with more coverage of the launch of the Columbia Space Shuttle after this message and a word from our local stations. <laughs> You are looking at four of the best cereals you've ever tasted. You are looking at a teen flake. You are looking at the taste of wheat, the taste of corn, the taste of oats, and the crunchy taste of rice. Teen flakes. Four great tastes teamed up to create one deliciously crunchy cereal. It may not look remarkably different, but what your eye can't see, your tongue will taste. Teen flakes from Nabisco. A team of taste in every flake. Maybe your mother never told you. There's more to being a woman than minding your manners. I'm Jacqueline Smith, and being a woman means sometimes taking the first step first. There's a new fragrance that understands, a pre. A pre is a little unsettling, a little disturbing. A pre is a most provocative fragrance. If mama never told you, I'll tell you. Part of the art of being a woman is knowing when not to be too much of a lady. A pre by Max Factor. 
You know, there's a real easy way to give your dog meat protein these days. Give him Alpo beef flavored dinner. There's as much meat protein in this 10 pound bag of Alpo as there is in this roast. And because Alpo Dry has so much meat protein, there's no need to add meat. Now dogs need protein, and they love the taste of beef. So give your dog meat protein the easy way. Alpo beef flavored dinner. The dry dog food with so much meat protein, there's no need to add meat. Don't come back. Don't come back. Junior's Ray Giles on 2020 tonight. Say what? Don't come back. No yeah, I know it's your house, but still, don't I mean, come don't come back. Don't come back. Guns, guard dogs, tear gas. Hollywood stars protect themselves from criminals and lunatics. Read about it in TV Guide. After five years of rave review, the lights go up on Macy's Celebration. Join us for the Cellar's fifth anniversary, where the excitement is more gleaming, more dazzling than ever. The Cellar is your port of call for flavors from around the world. The center for innovative household appliances. A world of colorful things to see. We'll show you how it all comes to life. Join us during Macy's Celebration, going on now. We're Macy's. We're a part of your life. At Pergament's two-for-one paint sale, I bought a gallon of Pergament's quality one coat paint for my living room. And got a second gallon free for the bedroom. Thanks, Pergament. I bought a gallon of Pergament's quality scrubbable paint for the kitchen. And got a free gallon in a different color for the den. Thanks, Pergament. This week, it's two-for-one on Pergament's select quality paints. Spectacular savings at two-for-one prices. Hurry in. Be confident. Shop Pergament for your home. Where were you in 73 tonight at 7.30? And good morning once again. You see the countdown clock ticking away at 10 minutes and 47 seconds, but there is going to be another built-in hold of uh, 10 minutes that's uh, planned. Here you see some of the crowd uh, gathered around, waiting uh, and growing uh, more anxious, I suppose, and more excited uh, with every passing moment, because we're getting to the point now where the astronauts have just been advised uh, about their uh, abort conditions, uh, they avoid uh, procedures again in the event that should be necessary. Well, and of course, there's a lot of uh, ships and aircraft around the world yes. that are on station uh, if the aircraft, uh, spacecraft has to land at different places. And of course, the crew has ejection seats. Uh, should they have to use them uh, in that case, they'd have to land somewhere out there in the water, I expect. Yes, they can still get out of the spacecraft in, in the event that they have to, even before launch, and uh, even very shortly after launch, too. The access arm uh, is about to be... Uh, taken away or it ha has it been moved already no not yet that's not the yet. arm no. that's the arm that houses a white room everyone's right. heard about the white room well, the white room is a is the last piece of solid earth yeah. that the crew stands on and that's where they uh, they get their good lucks and farewells and their last uh, uh, godspeed from the from the support crew they can bring that back in a hurry too if they, they have sure to, can they? that's one of the Something main like 60 seconds or so I yeah and that yes Okay, well, Lynn Scher has prepared a report on just uh, what will happen in the event there is an emergency here on the pad, and we'd like to uh, have that report now from Lynn Scher. If something goes wrong on the pad before launch, making an emergency escape necessary, the crew will follow the procedure they've practiced many times. Some of the drill has been in the trainer, so Engel and Truly could practice getting out of the cockpit vertically or horizontally. The rest of the drill has been on the pad itself, as described by Joe Engel. We uh, uh, practice coming out of the vehicle in a contingency situation uh, and escaping from the tower, uh, getting clear of the tower. We've got these uh, baskets and slide wires that we uh, are able to get into and, and uh, cut the restraining cable and the, and the basket slides down to a, a personnel carrier that, uh, that uh, we can then get in and drive clear of the pad. The emergency escape uh, training that we have done at the Cape, just like John and Crip, is uh, one of those things. And it's uh, just a, a big scramble to get out in case you had an emergency. We're confident we know uh, how to do it. Uh, we've practiced it, and, uh, you know, if we had to do it, we'd, uh, we'd scramble. Once the shuttle lifts off, the astronauts have less than two minutes to use their ejection seats. They're a modified version of Air Force ejection seats, and they're only considered safe up to 100,000 feet, or about 19 miles.
In addition, military helicopters will be ready to take off to rescue the astronauts. They've practiced picking up downed crewmen in the ocean. And they've rehearsed a parachute rescue. Using a mock-up of the orbiter itself in the water. They've also simulated a ground landing emergency. If the orbiter had to return to the Cape after launch, practicing removing injured astronauts for treatment at nearby hospitals. All right, thank you very much, Lynn. Uh, it's useful, I think, to point out that uh, while these procedures aren't necessarily practiced many times and everything has to be anticipated, nevertheless, we have never had in the history of manned spaceflight in this country an occasion to actually use any of those ejection or emergency procedures, have we, Gene? No, we haven't, uh, but uh, we have many backup systems. In the case the guidance of the booster fails, the crew can actually take it over and fly it uh, like an airplane from the cockpit. Uh, we have many other procedures, both mechanical and human procedures, to keep us from doing what we just saw there. Yes.